For the Washington Post, veterans tear down memorial barricades. And if you've been following the shutdown, this is sort of one glimmer of hope, one beautiful thing to come out of the whole shutdown is that veterans, starting with the World War II Memorial, first just pushed barricades out of the way and then escalated with this. Protesters seized fencing at monuments, pilot at White House. Ernest Atkins left his wife and four-month-old baby in Blacksburg, Virginia, Saturday to drive four hours to Washington. The U.S. Army veteran then spent Sunday morning marching through the city where he wound up standing in front of the White House for three hours, holding a sign over his head that read, Respect Our Vets. Now, it's kind of sad that they're you have one minute left. going to the White House here in the first place because for all the horrible evils in the world that Obama is responsible for, the government shutdown isn't one of them. And yes, I know, you might think, hey, how is that an evil thing? Well, when the government has made people dependent on it and then pulls the rug out from underneath people, yeah, that's evil, even though the ideal would be that they weren't dependent on government at all in the first place. He was one of the hundreds of veterans who descended on, the Washington, on Washington for the Million Vet March on the memorials. Frustrated with the government shutdown, protesters tore down barricades from closed monuments and memorials and piled them outside the White House. It was the latest burst of public outrage over lawmakers' inability to compromise over the budget, leading to a shutdown that has crippled government services and left tens of thousands of federal employees furloughed. With a modest disability check that may be cut off within weeks and severe health problems after doing two tours of duty in Iraq, I don't know what to do to bring in income, said Atkins, 32. The caller has hung up. Incorrect call from... Adam Kokus. An inmate at CCA Correctional Treatment Facility. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. To refuse charges, press 2. If you would like... Thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Now, I can certainly relate to Mr. Atkins. For those of you that don't know, I'm a disabled veteran myself, 70% for PTSD, and I haven't had a regular income since my television show was, was uh, canceled. So I, I understand this, and, and I'm in a position where I can at least, you know, if, if, if I need to do other things to, to, to support myself, I'm not absolutely relying on it. And I think most people who, who are on government disability should really take this as an important warning. And I hope that people learn the lesson of this shutdown and, and, and see that it being dependent on government is really dangerous. But there's some other misguided problems with this protest. And what, one of the, the, the caption here says, protesters and million vets march on the memorials, pile barricades at the White House, uh, police scuffle with demonstrators. And you've got two veterans, allegedly, here grabbing batons held by riot police. And U.S. Park Police estimated there were 100 to 200 protesters and said there were no arrests. Now, maybe it's a, a distinct respect afforded to a group of veterans, but you don't get to just grab the batons of, of Park Police officers and, and not get arrested most of the time. This is really highly unusual. They carried impeach Obama signs and waved yellow, don't tread on the American Revolution era flags, before moving on to the U.S. Capitol a few hours later. The demonstrations were mostly peaceful, with a few short clashes between police and protesters in front of the White House's officers put up temporary fencing along the sidewalk. Now, I'm glad that they moved on to the Capitol, but that's where they should have been piling these fences, because that's you know, really where the problem is. But, yeah, and, and impeach Obama seems a little bit off message here, but, you know, all that aside, I, I think there's a, you know, a, a bigger problem with this, and, and that Veterans are saying, you know, look, well, the, the government won't even let us mourn our fallen comrades. And I, it's true, it's it's tragic. But to say that, well, we're going to then turn to the abusers here, the, the you know, the, the mechanisms by which we as poor men were sent to die in rich men's wars, we're going to turn to them to beg for access to government memorials in order to have this emotional release. And I understand having a single place for this, but giving the government, again, a monopoly on your emotions after leaving the service and saying, now, all right, well, if the government, you know, pile of rocks and stone and steel and whatever the memorials are made out of isn't available to us, we're going to be angry. Angry? Like, we're going to waste emotional energy on that? I mean, I, I understand, I relate, but really, I, I hope that veterans who are, who are seeing this, who are a part of this, can, can step back for a second and see the bigger picture and realize that they were dupes, victims of, of this system that doesn't give a crap about them. And this is just one more way that it shows it, that they don't care that, that you're a veteran that you want to, you know, that you want to pay respects to your your fellow fallen soldier, your fallen soldiers, you know, your your, your fallen comrades. That you know, they, they don't care about your emotional state. They will use you to make a political point. But this is so 
insignificant to the, the, the problem of war itself. They will literally risk your life. They will put American lives in danger to line the pockets of the military-industrial complex, the war profiteers, and to you know, benefit the banksters and the politicians who understand that war is the health of the state. I mean, if you could just step back and see that there's a much bigger problem here, I think these efforts and this emotional distress could be directed more productively. Michael Ashmore drove 24 hours from Texas for the march. The 24-year-old former Marine served four years in Afghanistan and said his disability benefit stopped about a week ago. Ashmore said he suffers from PTSD and is living one day at a time without his disability check. Politicians, he said, just need to get their priorities straight and look out for everybody else instead of themselves. Uh, I'm sorry, but you're denying human nature the fact that politicians are going to look out for anybody but themselves and their sponsors, and that's the problem with this system, with a democratic republic, with a democracy of any kind. When people's votes can be swayed by money, politicians will be corrupt. At about 3 p.m., Adkins prepared to wrap up his protest and headed back home to his family. Holding back tears, he said his household has cut back on expenses, spending money mostly on diapers and formula for his son. As he warned lawmakers, quote, stop being petty. We're talking about childish games that affect the American people. Indeed, but I hope you'll see the bigger games rather than just the petty ones around the memorials.